Welcome to our video lecture. Today we are going to be talking about uh, controller tuning and implementing PID control using Python and specifically we're going to use this tool called Collimator which is a nice graphical user interface, interface a lot like Simulink but it's geared toward Python users. So in our last video lecture we talked about how would you model a simple process using like a first order transfer function and specifically we were talking about modeling the uh, flow through a pipe as a function of valve position. So if we have a valve here, um, we came up with a relationship, an approximate relationship, where you could model this flow rate, we'll call it Qn, as a function of the lift or the valve position. So we talked about you can't just uh, specify a particular flow rate, what you would actually do is you'd control the position of the valve. And so if you wanted to achieve a particular flow rate, what you would do would be add an automatic controller to it. And so we're going to teach you how to simulate this using uh, Collimator. So this uh, L is our lift or our valve position. If you want to go back and uh, remind yourself how we did this model, um, you can look at the previous lecture video. But for today, we're just going to start right in by digging into our simulation model in Collimator. So again, Collimator is a lot like Simulink. You can build really complex dynamic models, but this this uh, graphic user interface where you can use block diagrams and cut them, custom Python coding for specific component models makes life a lot easier to, to model a complex system. So I go to collimator.ai, I've logged in already. This is the model that we were working with before. So here we change the valve positioner L that goes through this transfer function. This transfer function, if I click on it, you can see it has a process gain of 0 0.1 and then a process time constant of one minute. We're using time units of minutes. So uh, we want to add feedback control. So instead of specifying the valve position, so our previous step test, we changed the valve position from 20 to 40, and then we graphed and looked at how that changed our uh, inlet flow rate. Instead, we want to we want to tell our system, hey, I want to get a particular flow rate. Like I want to achieve five cubic meters per minute. How do I do that? So the answer would be to add a controller. And so specifically what we would do with our controller, first we would measure our flow rate. So here we would use something like a uh, flow transmitter, some kind of a flow meter. We would take that signal. So if you want to be able to control it, you first need to measure it. So we'd measure it. We would send this information to a flow controller. This flow controller will take in a set point here. And then once it takes in that information about the set point, it's going to push this command, which will be our lift or our valve position to the actual valve. So we can give this a set point. So here we'd give this something like five cubic meters per minute. All right, so let's talk about how to do this. There is a whole lot of information on control theory. We're going to use some very simple tuning to do this. So specifically, we're going to be using something called internal model control or IMC tuning relations. And we're going to be using the proportional integral uh, algorithm. We will not use the derivative. We want to keep this fairly simple. So our controller is going to have certain parameters that we need to define, namely uh, k sub p, which is the uh, the controller proportional gain, and then k sub i, which is the controller integral gain. In order to tune this, first we're going to need to know these parameters, our, our process time constant. Again, for our valve, we defined a process time constant of one minute, and then we would need the process gain. So our particular valve has a process gain of 0 0.1, and that would have units of uh, cubic meters per minute per valve position. So once we know these things, this is going to be our main design parameter is this tau sub c. So tau sub c is our controller uh, time constant. So this is something we would pick. So our process has a time constant of one minute. Um, we can add a controller. We can actually make this process go faster by adding an automatic controller. So if we set tau c to be something like half a minute or a quarter of a minute, what we're saying is we want this process to be able to change even faster than it would naturally change. We could err on the side of being really conservative, and we could make tau c something that is even 
longer, it has a larger time constant than our natural process. So we could say that tau c is five minutes rather than one a minute, which would mean that our controlled system would take even longer to respond. So first we would pick tau c, we would plug in these values that we that are inherent to our process. In this case, the process we're talking about is just this valve and how it would respond to a changing valve position. That would give us our uh, our controller proportional gain, after which we would plug that controller proportional gain into here, and we'd plug in our process time constant into here, and that would give us our controller integral gain. So let's take a look at how we would tune this system. I've created just a really simple Excel spreadsheet. Our process gain, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is 0 0.1. Our process time constant is just one minute. Our desired controller time constant, again, this is something that we want to define. Let's say we want to speed this process up. So let's say we want our process to be uh, to respond faster. We want the valve to open or close on a time scale of 15 seconds or a quarter of a minute. All right, so from there we would use those IMC tuning relationships to calculate our controller proportional gain. Again, this relationship was k sub p is equal to tau or our process time constant divided by our process gain multiplied by our desired controller time constant. So that gives us a number of 40. Our controller integral gain, again using those same formulas from the slide, this is equal to k sub p divided by tau. And since tau is just one, our controller integral gain ends up being just 40. So if we wanted to speed this process up and let's say make it go in a tenth of a minute, that would give us a bigger gain, which means our controller is going to be more aggressive to try and make things happen faster. If we wanted to make this slower, we could have a smaller gain. So this would mean our, our controller would respond slower. So again, this is tuning and you sort of have to play around with it with your real system and see how things respond. All right, so now I'm gonna complete the architecture using collimator. So what we wanna do here is we want to uh, take our measurement from here. This is our actual, this is our, our flow rate. We want to run this through a an error calculator. So this would be, this is gonna calculate our error or the difference between our set point and our measured value. I'm going to left click on this error bar. I don't want this to be adding. I want this to be a difference here. So this is going to take the difference between our measured signal. So again, this is the desired, I mean, this is the actual measured flow rate. And then I'm going to add in another source. I'm going to use a step function here to start off with. And so here, I'm going to connect that to the positive terminal on our error uh, calculation. And in this spot, I'm going to call this Q in set point. And let's say that we want a start value of, uh, let's go with three cubic meters per minute and an end value of, let's go with six cubic meters per minute. And let's have this make this step at uh, I don't know, let's go with 10 minutes here. And then our overall simulation goes to 10 minutes, so I'm going to change that to 20 minutes. So now we will simulate for 10 minutes, then we'll make this step change and see how our controller responds. So now I'm going to need a new block, and I'm going to go in here and calculate uh, PID. So we're trying to keep this simple. We're just using a PI controller. Um, we're not having any derivative action on this. All right, so this PID controller, we just got our tuning parameters from it. We had a process gain, or a, sorry, a proportional gain of 40 and an integral gain of 40. And we are going to have a, a derivative gain of just zero. This is the, we're just gonna keep this as a, a simple PI controller, which is a fairly robust controller, especially for simple applications. All right, I'm gonna leave this in. This is a filtering term. We're fine there, uh, just leaving that in as is. All right, so what we want is this controller is gonna take in the, the real measured value of our flow rate, the desired value or the set point of our flow rate, calculate the error, and then this is gonna say, I'm gonna calculate the, the desired valve position based on how I'm tracking my actual flow rate. 
So we will no longer specifically set a valve position, rather we're going to let this controller do it for us in an automated, automated way. I'm going to call this block valve position just to make it a little more descriptive. The output of this is going to be the valve position. And I can certainly track that. I want to track this set point here. All right, so let's see how our newly tuned system does by hitting run on our simulation. All right, so here we have our actual inlet flow rate. You see that it does. It starts from an initial condition, um, and then it quickly reaches this set point of three, like we gave it. And then it goes to six after the set point change is made. It can be useful to compare these on the same plot. So I'm going to gradually drag this set point measurement up so I can eventually get it on the same plot. I wish there was a better way of doing this. I don't know of one at the moment. So I'm just going to do this by incrementally moving this set point signal up so that it can be by my real signal. And this is a common way of like of, of graphing uh, controller outputs. You want to compare the set point to the actual value. Okay, so I've got this. Okay, so this shows me that it does track the set point exceedingly well. Our system is pretty idealized. It doesn't have any noise. Um, and it does achieve this change. So you can see here we make the set point change. And we are most of the way there after about uh, one controller time constant. And then we get pretty much to our set point within about a minute, which is great. Okay, so just quickly, let's look at what if we made our controller more aggressive. So we would go into our controller. We can give this uh, these parameters of 100, which would correspond to that controller time constant of 0.1. So we should see the uh, flow rate reaches the set point a little bit faster. So it does. So this is this is great. Uh, you don't want your controller to be overly responsive. In some cases, you can have overshoot where it does too much. Uh, you also don't want your controller to be too responsive to the uh, within the physical limitations of your system, or have it be too responsive to noise. So just before we close here, let's let's give this a more complicated set point. So let's find some other kind of signal here, maybe like a pulse, and see how it follows a, something more complex like a pulse. So my pulse here, um, I connect that. I'm going to give this again a name of Q in. Oh, that won't let me do that. Okay, yeah, this was Q in set point. All right, so this is going to get pulse in. It. Let's give it a period of two. Let's give it an amplitude of, uh, let's go four here, and a pulse width of 0.5. So this is going to give it a set point of four for one minute, and then it's going to give a set point of zero for one minute. Um, and actually what we want to do, I want to add this to a constant value here so we can actually get a so this doesn't give us a flow rate of zero but it gives us some um, non-zero flow rate so I'm going to add in a constant here of let's say two all right I'm going to take another adder here and I'm just going to add this pulse to this constant and now my flow rate will oscillate between 2 and and 4 if I change this amplitude to 2. Okay so now I'll go back I'm just gonna change this back to pulse and I'm gonna make this my Q in set point. Alright so now the combination of those two signals once you add them together becomes my real set point. And let's just see how our controller uh, responds to this kind of regular changes in the set point. All right, so here you have see I have Q in and it does oscillate pretty regularly between uh, 2 and 4. And we should come down and see that the set point does that but with these square waves. So again, I'm going to creep this set point value up until I can add it to my chart there. Oops, that's not where I wanted it. All right, so I can add my set point to the actual measured value, and you can see that this tracks the set point really well.
All right, stay tuned. We're going to be doing uh, a cascade control with the level in our tank next. We'll be adding a second controller.